What's up everyone? I'm Tim and this is my channel 40 Times Around where we talk about everything related to motorcycles, camping, travel, and adventure. And today we're going to talk about what may be a little bit of a sensitive topic. And as the title of this video suggests, we're going to be talking about listening to music on a motorcycle. And whether you agree with it or not, I think I have some valid points that are worth hearing and considering, but we're going to jump into that right after this. So if this is a topic that interests you, or actually even if it isn't, there is a great moto vlogger who recently did a video on this topic and I really wanted to throw in my two cents on the conversation. But his name is Chris Lonsbury and you should definitely go check him out and see what he has to say about this topic. I'll link to it here if you want to check it out. I think he made some great points and he's also really funny and has a great personality. He makes a lot of videos on a wide variety of topics and he's a great photographer as well. So I highly recommend that you go check out his channel which I honestly think has way less subscribers than it should uh, for the quality of content he's putting out and he's definitely putting in the work. Anyways, jumping right into my two cents on the topic of music on a motorcycle. This is actually a topic I've been meaning to cover for a while, so I'm going to break this down into five key points I want to make in favor of listening to music. I just want to say that I don't always listen to music and sometimes it's nice to listen to the sound of wind and my engine and just enjoy the quiet. However, for the most part, I am usually listening to music when I'm on my bike. It's important to note that it's at a volume that still allows me to hear traffic and the sound of my own engine, which is why I like using a Bluetooth headset because the volume will automatically adjust uh, from when I'm sitting at a red light to when I'm moving and the wind noise picks up. This way it's always at a volume relatively the same compared to the conditions. In other words, if I'm cruising along at 50 with the music at a level I can hear, when I stop at a light, it will seem to be blaring and I won't be able to hear as much of what's going on around me. For example, a pair of screeching tires behind me is something I'm going to want to hear before I feel the metal attached to them. Anyways, the five points I want to make will be on why I personally listen to music on a motorcycle. I'm sure a few people will disagree with me on this, uh, but this is what works for me. So key point number one is memory, and this is specific to traveling on a motorcycle and not just riding a bike. Have you ever listened to a song from your past and been magically transported back to some other time? Well, I like to use music as a reverse of this effect. I choose specific and new to me music for a long trip, and then it becomes a soundtrack for that adventure. To this day, if I listen to Silver Sun pickups, I can see the road unfolding in front of me across the Great Plains as I rode into the sunset toward what would be my first visit to South Dakota, and many other memories from my first big trip will just come rushing back to me. Music helps give us an anchor for memories and so this can be a valuable trick when traveling on a bike that you can use for years to come. It's great because that trip lasted two months so I really got kind of tired of that music and I stopped listening to it as much. But every once in a while I'll hear a song come on the radio and it just propels me back to moments from that trip. It'll help solidify memories, or at least it does for me, so that's key point number one. Number two is that it quiets the mind. This one may be specific to me, but I have a feeling some people will be able to relate to this one. Sometimes if I don't have music on, my brain will actually run through loops of thought. Maybe I have a problem at work, for example, as I'm riding along, my brain will go through all these scenarios and play these movies in my head going over all these possibilities that'll never happen, trying to predict every possible outcome of a decision I might have to make or whatever the case may be. Pretty often I start thinking about all the things on my to-do list. And I like I really like to be productive and so this is pretty often um, planning in my head but this can develop into a mental brain loop too. I'll start listing everything in my head and devising a plan and going through strategy and and all of that stuff it can become pretty distracting and honestly I like to use this sometimes to my advantage and I'll use it to meditate on big decisions but if you're in stop and go traffic or any other traffic situation that requires immediate and constant attention then this can become downright dangerous. It's okay if I'm on an empty two-laner to drift away with my thoughts once in a while, but if I need to focus, then I might need a way to quiet my mind, and music can be really great for that. Like I said, maybe that's just for me, but this does work for me when music is used as a background noise to kind of neutralize any deep thought. I have an active mind, so I actually use it for this purpose a lot. Okay, the third point is that music can be used as a tool. It can alter your mood, for example. I actually have specific playlists for certain situations. For example, in the morning I like to listen to soft music that's really easy on the ears. Uh, on, an, on the other hand, if it's getting late, maybe it's been a long day and I'm feeling a little drained, but let's say I have another 50 miles to the next campsite, then I put on something a little harder, faster paced, and maybe a little more upbeat. 
can actually pump me up and keep me awake and excited. Sometimes towards the end of a big trip I can start to get kind of sad believe it or not and music is a great way to put myself in a good mood again and kind of pull me back to living in the moment again and instead of focusing on the end of a good trip. It can also motivate and inspire too. Uh, this can take an average moment or even a really good moment and magnify it into something incredible if your favorite song is playing. My suggestion is that you start taking a mental note of how certain music affects you and pick music that serves a certain purpose on the motorcycle. I used to listen to a lot of heavy music that was really aggressive and I would just always listen to that on the bike and I realized it was actually affecting the way I rode. It actually made me ride faster and more aggressive. Now I avoid that unless it's the end of the day and I'm using it to pump myself up. I tried listening to Dave Matthews because they thought that that would be great music for riding and it would keep me even keeled. Now I'm not knocking Dave Matthews band if you listen to them, but that in particular just was kind of too relaxing for me and it would almost sedate me. Pay attention to how music affects you, like I said, because this can be different for everyone. What helps me concentrate may be distracting to you, and what you find relaxing might make me anxious. Music is a powerful tool if it's used as one. To further that point with this next tip, tip number four, music can help you pass the time. On some really long stretches between good scenery, things can get a little dry, and getting bored on a motorcycle will lead to tiredness and complacency. Music is actually based on a relationship between one note and the next note, so because of this your brain actually has to do work to make sense of what you're hearing. Even if you aren't conscious of this, it creates brain activity. In fact, studies have been done on the effects of listening to new music in later years of life and how it can actually help maintain healthy brain function. Also, because music can positively increase your mood, it can actually help you ride better and possibly even ride safer in situations like riding along boring stretches of highway for hours and hours. Uh, another example, if you've ever felt frustrated with traffic on a bike, think about how that would be different in a car if you could put some music on that you really enjoy. It can help you relax, it can keep you focused on the task at hand, rather than letting your frustration with the pace of traffic lead to less than ideal decision making. Okay, tip number five, music makes you happier. Music can actually reduce anxiety, blood pressure, and even physical pain, and it can also help improve sleep. If you're on a vacation, who doesn't want to be happier? And even if you're just commuting to and from work, isn't happier better? Listening to music can actually lower levels of cortisol in your body, which is a stress-causing hormone. This can actually have long-term benefits for your overall health, but let's just leave it at this. Music makes me happy, so I listen to music on a motorcycle. If it doesn't make you happy, don't do it. That's really the beauty of motorcycling and the freedom that comes with it. Everyone can be an individual on a motorcycle. What you do in your helmet doesn't affect me, even if we ride together. And everyone is able to make their own motorcycle experience exactly what they want it to be, to do what works for them as an individual. This is just what works for me. So that's it. Like I said, I'm not trying to change anyone's mind. This is just my opinion and what works for me as far as music on a motorcycle. So I hope you guys got something out of this video. If you did, make sure you hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you guys want to see more videos about motorcycles, camping, travel, and adventure. And don't forget to hit the little bell. That way you guys don't miss anything whenever I post something new. Anyways, thanks for watching. See you next time.